What's up, guys? Adam Saxon, a.k.a. Guy in a Cube, bringing you this week's roundups. And last week, there was a lot of announcements leading up to and including at pass. So let's dig in and see what happened. Normally, I like to start off with a community item, but this week, I'm going to start off with a product update just to make sure everything flows in a nice, orderly fashion. So today, we're going to start off with Power BI Desktop. The October release was announced last week, and there were a lot of great things in this update. First up is the report grid lines and snap to grid. Yay, much rejoicing. You can now actually snap to grid items. so You can line things up in a way that makes sense and it's not like jagged and it gets you know out of sync for all you OCD people out there. Some analytics items that were in there were grouping and binning, the ability to include and exclude items top in, the ability to use OLEDB as a connection source. Previously, we've had ODBC available for you if your data source wasn't listed in the get data area, and now you can use OLEDB as well. And there were a couple of other updates as well, so be sure to check out this blog post to see all the items with examples of how to go through and use these. You won't be disappointed. And as a reminder for like the grid option, the snap to grid, that's a preview feature, so don't forget to go to options and enable that preview feature if you wanna see it. Okay, now for the community item, I've got a blog post from Rezarad where he looks at the grouping and binning option in the new Power BI desktop update. So if you're a little confused or not very sure of how the grouping works or how binning works, how it's implemented in Power BI desktop, this blog post is a great blog post to go through and visually see like, okay, what does this mean? Reza does a great job of breaking this down and you can easily get up to speed and use these features with inside of Power BI Desktop. They can really provide a lot of power when trying to create those visualizations in your report so that they make sense. Another big announcement that happened last week had to do with reporting services and the ability to use a VM that has a preview build of Power BI reports working inside of the reporting services web portal. That's right, you can play with it now. You can upload your PBIX files to the web portal and reporting services and interact with those reports inside of the web browser on premises. Right now, this is just available as a VM and it's a preview item. So stay tuned for more details on what is to come and when you can try that out in your own on-premises environment. Also, this preview allows you to use AS live connections to either tabular or multidimensional. Ricardo mentioned in the blog that more data sources will come later. So if this is something you've been waiting for, be sure to try the VM and you know kick the tires a little bit, give it a spin, and let us know what you think. Now allow me to prepare for the next item on the list. And that is the use of our visuals as a custom visual inside of Power BI Desktop or the service itself. So if you go to the custom visual gallery now, there are our visuals that are available to where you don't need to know how to write R at all. You can just download these custom visuals and add some data to them and they will just work. You can still create your own R visuals through R script if that's something that you're interested in. But if you're not and you don't know anything about R, download these custom visuals, give them a try, add some data, and see if they can help boost your reports. Last item for this week is an announcement for Azure Analysis Services. So it is a full service inside of Azure. So you can create these instances inside of the Azure portal. There are different levels for space and pricing that are available to you that go up to 100 gigs in size. And they're fully usable with all the tools that you're familiar with. So you can use Management Studio, you can use SQL Server data tools to create those models, publish them, and work with them. You can also use the on-premises data gateway that you would normally use for Power BI or Power Apps or Flow. You can use that with Azure Analysis Services to help process data for your model. Be sure to check that out and let me know what you think about that. Okay, as always, the links for all the items I talked about plus some bonus items are down in the description below. Also, be sure to leave your comments. Let me know which one was your favorite or you can leave that in the poll up above and let me know as well. And if you like the video, be sure to like it. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more great content. And as always, thank you so much for watching and keep being awesome.